Folks, so it is Friday night. Thanks for joining us. So we have this crazy idea. You know, we, we have these conversations, Melissa and I, all the time. You know, this the School of Kingdom Writers and kind of ministry is is a lifestyle for us. It's more than just a job. And so we work all day doing this stuff, and, and then at night we talk and we pray about it. And we really want to invite you guys into that process. And when we don't really know what that looks like yet, but we wanted to experiment with it. And, and that's kind of the purpose of some of these videos that we've done on Friday nights is to invite you into, you know, what does it look like kind of behind the scenes on the, on the inside of our thought process and things like that. So welcome. We're just going to have a conversation and uh, we're going to figure out how to incorporate uh, kind of an anonymous third party into that. So if you have questions or comments, please drop them in the feed. Don't be shy at all. Uh, whenever I teach a class, at least whenever I teach a small classroom in the same room with people, I always tell them, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions because we really can't get off track. Off track just means that we're talking about the things that are important to you instead of just the things that are important to me. So please, uh, you know, drop comments and you, that's a good line, right? Were you impressed by it? You weren't paying attention. You're not even here. I was trying to figure out the screen to make sure I don't miss things. <laughs> Melissa will join us later. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so drop stuff in the comments and, uh, Melissa, you want to pray? Yeah, I just want to pray and just invite the Holy Spirit because I believe that even though we're like <laughs> in this like virtual world that, you know, Holy Spirit works, um, mysteriously in that way. And so I just want to invite his presence and have him lead this conversation for us tonight. So God, we just thank you so much for the opportunity, um, and that Brad and I get to, to lead this school and, um, and just to have um, this space to to kind of chat and um, and share our lives and share a piece of, of our thought process process of things and so God I just pray that you lead us tonight I know that we have some thoughts and things to talk about but you know if you have different things that that you want to talk about I pray um, that you just put that in our minds that somebody asks a question um, I would just really want. We just really want to engage in community with, you know, whoever's out there. Um, and so I just pray that you bless every person watching this. God, I pray that they feel your tangible presence tonight. God, I pray that, that you touch them, touch their lives. I pray that you help them to know that, that you just have big things for them um, and that you just believe in them, that you believe in the things that they can do. Mm -hmm. And so I just pray that you bless this timeline. Yeah. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. Yeah, yeah and, and while Melissa was praying, I felt like the, the Lord was speaking something to me. And so if this is a, a new experience for you, um, sometimes this happens. You know, we pray and, and God reveals things to us. And most of the time it's in the context of, you know, sitting with other people. But sometimes it's happened on my videos like this. So um, I felt like the Lord was saying that somebody has pain in both hips. I don't know if it's like a rheumatoid issue or, or what the problem is, but pain in, in both the left and the right hip. And usually when he, when he reveals something like that, it's because he wants to supernaturally and miraculously touch that. So if that's you, please claim it in the comments. Um, you know, if you're watching the recording later and that's you, I, I think that still counts. But um, I just want to pray for that right now. It won't take long. But um, Lord, this, this thing that you're revealing, um, you know, whoever that is, and, you know, I can see that there are some people watching, not a lot, but there's some people watching. And so you just know each one of us. You get your finger on each one of us. And so, Lord, I ask that you would fall on this person that uh, is struggling with that issue, with uh, pain in their hips. Father, I pray that you would clean out all arthritis, God, any other, uh, you know, infection or other issue, gout or whatever might be in there. Father, we just ask that you would come supernaturally, that you would clean that out. Father, that would be good as new, that you restore it to its original design right now. And I thank you so much for touching this life. Lord, I pray that your fingerprints would be all over this, that that whatever, um, you know, emotional healing or spiritual growth you've ordained to accompany this this miracle, that uh, you bring about the right people to, to usher that through and to disciple this person through this. So thank you so much for loving us, allowing us to minister, and just blessing this person that way. Amen. So, yeah, so if, if that's you, if that resonates with you, um, I mean, if it is you, it, you would know, um, then please uh, drop a comment. We just love to be encouraged when, when that stuff happens. So uh, welcome, Howie and Debbie. So glad that you guys are joining us tonight. Um, and so, I don't know, Melissa, I was, I was thinking about this, and I didn't 
Melissa and I, we tried to have a conversation about what we would talk about and Melissa just got angrier with me. So, um, I feel like it's always really hard to do these. There's like so much pressure to do these live videos, you know, it's like, you're going to be live. Like, yeah, you can't take it back. You can't take it back. And you also don't want to just like ramble on like an idiot, you know? And right. And we went like, I don't just do this and it be like pointless, I guess. But right. I also just want to be casual. Like that's the whole point is like that we can be casual, right? You yeah. Know? And and Debbie McMillan has joined us too. Hi, Debbie. Apparently we have two Debbies here. Wow. Um, nice. Maybe everybody here is named Debbie. That would be very cool. That would be. But <laughs> so, anyways, most I was wondering what is troubling you most in the world right now. I mean, I think the first thought that comes to mind is just like. The divisiveness that just seems to have taken taken over. I was thinking about that again, you know, from the beginning of COVID to now, like there was like this period, I was thinking about it again the other day, but there's like this period of like time right in the beginning where it's like we we're all united as Americans, you know, we're like we're gonna yeah. fight this this thing. And I feel like that lasted maybe like two weeks. And maybe. then it's like then it just has like spiraled, you know, since then. And it's just like it's hard to even fathom like what life how how different life was in february and like that's okay because i know that god is like bringing really like amazing things out of time too like i know that like i don't really want to go back to where i was in february either but i also like just like just the the hatred that seems to be like seeping into everyday life is yeah. really troubling yeah definitely and i think even like with george floyd you see the same thing you know there was this time Right after the George Floyd incident in uh, in Milwaukee, that's where it was, or Minneapolis, 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 where everybody was kind of looking at this thing and like universally, everybody was like, yeah, this is not what we want to be, you know, and, and you saw everybody kind of approaching solutions and coming together. And then just this this really slippery divisiveness slipped in, right, and the, the issue changed, right? And so now the talking points all became about uh, looting and, and what's the appropriate way to protest and all these things that distracted from the real, I think, I think justice and, and mercy that God was, you know, ready to pour out on our land. And so, yeah. Yeah. And I think it all comes down to, to truth being presented as lies, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that that's what we're dealing with as a nation. And I don't even think it matters how you feel about politics that, you know, everybody can, can understand that kind of sentiment. Um, and of course, we're at home, and so it sounds like one of our kids is sneaking back down the stairs from bedtime. Um, but okay, what brings you the most joy in the world right now? Like in the world, like can it can it be in our personal? Life? Yeah, sure, anything. In our life, okay. Um, we just have a, like a fire going almost every day in our house, and it's just been really fun. Like I've just really been enjoying being outdoors this autumn. Yeah, so that's like a really. One was a very worldly thing, and this one's very like small, but it's just been, yeah, just like sitting with our kids around the fire has been been really nice. I uh, recently one of our friends was talking about she had a friend that like growing up like had a hot tub, and they would like the parents would like get in with like you know the the girl would have like you know friends or whatever, and they would just get in and they'd hang out in the hot tub at night and like. They would just, she was talking about how they'd have these like amazing conversations in this hot tub, like, you know, because it was just like, they could be vulnerable and they could ask hard questions and stuff, maybe because it was like, just like comfortable and it was kind of dark, you know, it was just like a relaxed environment. And I just, I kept thinking on that and I was like, I have no desire to have a hot tub. And I was like, what, like, how can we, you know, steward that for our kids? And anyways, I realized the other day when we were sitting outside around the fire, I was like, oh, this is kind of what it is for us. You know, they love like sitting out there and we get to have these like conversations without any distractions. Um, yeah. And it's like, you know, just a, a like a safe place, I think, you know, as, as our kids grow for them to kind of ask questions and, and um, yeah, we just get to be vulnerable with them. That is cool. And there's something magical about a fire where it's like automatically something to do. Right. Right. It's like you're really doing nothing, but just the, the, the activity of the fire. It's like there's this already this inertia there that mm -hmm. kind of uses up your energy and things like that. And it's like the folk, you know, you just like stare at the fire, right? You don't have to like, like have some conversation like this with somebody. Like right. there's like this thing to watch, I think. Hey, Saul, why don't you come here, buddy? So this is our son, Saul. And, um, I just want to invite you guys to pray with us for him. He hasn't been feeling well, and he's got 
some poison ivy on his face and he's been having this weird swelling issue. Um, a what? Something in my ear. Something in your ear? I don't know what that is. Okay. Can you pray for me? Okay, and I'll pray for the whole service, okay? Cool. So we do our best just to teach our kids that we pray and that things happen when we pray and that that's not the only reason we pray, um, but that Jesus instructs us that when things aren't the way that they ought to be, that we should pray and that things will change. And so um, our, our kids know to expect that. And we, we also live in the real world. So sometimes we uh, don't see stuff, but a lot of times we do. And it's amazing like how much we actually see happen the more we, we step into that. So, yeah, we're just going to pray for Saul, and, and please join us as we do that. So, Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for our boy here. We thank you so much for the ways that you love him, the way that you take care of him. Lord, I pray that you'd address this ear that's bothering him right now. Lord, I pray that you would just relax it, that you would take this irritation. God, if there's any infection or anything that doesn't belong there, we rebuke it right now and tell you to get out in the name of Jesus. So, Father, thank you for loving him, and thank you for bringing you peace to his mind now. Thank you for clearing all of his anxieties. Thank you for teaching him now that he can hear your voice, that he can expect to uh, cast all of his cares upon you, and that you'll take care of it. Lord, we also ask for your blessing with the, in the company of our friends and in their agreement now on this issue with his knees that are swelling. God, and, and, and uh, we just ask for your full and complete healing on that. We thank you so much for blessing him and helping him, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Good night, buddy. Cool. So while they do that, um, and, and so, yeah, like I mentioned, we're, we're just at home, and, and we think it's important to, uh, to pray for our kids that way. And we also think it's, it's cool that we have this technology that gives us the opportunity to just hang out with you guys and to give you an inside perspective into our life. And so that, that's the way it goes for us a lot of times. You know, we, we spend time praying in the evening a lot or, or, you know, talking about things that we've read that day, things that we've, um, you know, seen or encountered. And, uh, you know, it's kids in and out all the time. That's what happens when you have five. So um, while they're doing that, I, I do want to address this question tonight. So one of our arc year students um, asked this question. So ARC Year is our part-time program online for aspiring Christian novelists. And so right now they are uh, four classes into it, which means that they've received most of the material that teaches them how to develop a novel idea. And so right now they're kind of playing with different ideas and using this system that, that I've taught them to uh, develop a novel. And they'll pick an idea soon, and they'll spend the next six to eight months writing that novel. Um, while they also develop a professional author's platform. Um, and so we have kind of two groups. We've got the main group that takes a free class, and then there's this paid group called the cohort. They pay a tuition, um, but in addition to the, the classes, they get extra support and things. And so this is one of our cohort members, and he asked this question. He said, in regards to the School of Kingdom Writers, how much of the doing, planning, strategizing, and execution comes from your own thought, experience, knowledge, and planning? versus how much of it is instruction and intuition of the Holy Spirit. You seem to be naturally entrepreneurial and good at tackling things and figuring them out as you go. Is it difficult for you to give space for the Holy Spirit to direct you in something that you could likely accomplish in your own power, albeit not necessarily accomplishing what God had intended or built in the way he wanted it built? Or does it feel more like this is what the Spirit said, so now I am doing the best I know how at it? And that's a great question. Um, and so he sent that a couple weeks ago, and I, I told him that it was, it was probably more than I could email, but I, I wanted to talk about it in a format that we had enough space for it. So this seems like a good space for that. So, you know, Melissa, what are your thoughts on that? Where do you start? Start it out. I mean, yeah. You know, I think, I feel like we talk about this a lot. Like, I feel like often so many people are, are waiting for like an audible voice of the Lord to be like, go do this, you know, go be a missionary or go like start this thing. But like often it's just these little like for us at least, it's in these little like promptings, you know, and these little like, you know, God like knows the desires of our hearts and he places them there. And so it's like, well if this is something that's burning on my heart to to do, like I'm gonna just take steps to do that. And I think 
there's also this trust in there knowing that like we're if we're walking with God, like we're not gonna get like so off track that we're gonna like do something outside of his his will or his plan, you know, like he's he's gonna like guide us, you know. Right, like there's this this false concept I think that God has one plan for right. you. And if at some point you step off that track, you're going to be out of bounds for the rest of your life. You know, always trying to find your way back to that path. Yeah. But God is good enough that he has more paths. You know, if we screw this one up, there is another place that right. you can, you know, another on-ramp, you know, that is right. still to a good path. With God. Because we will. We will screw things up. And yeah. We'll do things on our own accord, you know, instead of like maybe the way that God had intended. Because yeah. We're humans. And I think this question is, is more about like walking it out right like beyond that initial discernment um and if you are discerning um i did a podcast uh, over a year ago now called discerning a call to write so i think it's really applicable whether you re- think about writing or thinking about some other kind of uh, endeavor you know with the holy spirit so i encourage you to check that out you can find it if you search for discerning a call to write kingdom writers or something like that on google um, you'll easily find it it's also on the sokw website um, but I think, I think this is the question we're supposed to be asking. You know, I, I feel like I don't really have a good answer for this because this is, this is exactly the question that we're supposed to be wrestling with for our entire lives, you know, and always like kind of refinding what the boundary is. And, and you know, did I, did I overstep it on this side or that side each time? And I think, so I think just to kind of restate the question, what it boils down to is as you're walking this stuff out, how much of it is you and how much of it is the Holy Spirit? Um, and so as I was considering this question, God brought um, this story from 2 Chronicles 20, um, and which is a cool chapter. You can check it out. But Jehoshaphat is king, um, and there's these armies coming against Israel. And so they, they're, they're freaking out. I mean, really freaking out. So everybody gathers together, and they all, uh, they're calling on God, asking, what should we do? And it... Um, the Spirit of God comes over Benaiah, the son of Jalel, and, um, and, and gives him this word. And he says, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And then he says, Tomorrow, march down against them. And so, you know, as the story goes on, they march out against this army, and by the time they get there, everybody's already dead. And in fact, a few verses le- later, it says... Um, that when, when they arrived, um, all they saw was dead bodies. They saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped because the Lord had, had caused these different armies to turn against each other rather than um, turning against uh, the Israelites. And so, but, but I think, you know, the interesting balance that this story points out to me is that God absolutely did all the work. All of the work was done before the army ever got there. Um, However, they still had to march out, right? There was still this component, there's still this prophetic act of, act of faith that they still had to march out um, to the battle. And, and that, that was an important piece of it. And so I think that um, our, our situation is much, much the same, that, yeah, we, we're absolutely relying on the Holy Spirit to guide us. We're absolutely relying on the Holy Spirit to, to make things happen. Um, before we get there. However, there's still this component that we have to be involved. We still have to do our best to do that. Um, and, and I do think that there is a kind of a, a poorly constructed idea in our Christian culture. Um, and it, it makes a great church sign. And it's a really encouraging church sign. I actually like it when I see it. But um, you, you've probably seen it somewhere. It's, it usually says something like, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. Right? And that's, that's a beautiful idea, and it's absolutely true. Like, God can certainly make us into anything he needs us to be. You know, when, when we say yes to the Lord, that we're a willing vessel, um, there is absolutely a Holy Spirit that can infuse in us whatever talents or skills or ideas that we need, hands down. However, we often see God calling people that are previously equipped by him. Um, so, you know, for instance, David wasn't like, this, when he fought Goliath, this wasn't his first battle. It says that before David fought Goliath, he'd, he'd killed the bear and he'd killed the lion. And, and he'd, he'd already proven that he was capable of the hard work. In fact, before David killed Goliath, he'd served in Saul's royal household. Right? So he'd always, already proven his, his capabilities. And that doesn't mean that God didn't provide those capabilities, that God didn't, didn't empower him and equip him ahead of time. 
certainly God was with him when he fought when he fought the bear, and God was with him when he fought the lion, and God was with him when he was chosen to serve in Saul's household. Um, but those things did happen ahead of that calling, and so I think that that's a component of it too. So when um, Jeff asked, um, you know, is is it difficult to give space to the Holy Spirit for something that you could likely accomplish in your own power? And in your own power is in quotes. I think that that's really important. That um, on, on both both sides, you know, still inside of that tension, is that whatever skills it might seem like we have to accomplish this mission that the Lord has put in front of us are skills that the Lord embedded earlier on. You know, even in some cases before we were walking with God, He was still working. He still, in with His you know infinite and complete knowledge of the universe, knows what He's going to call us into, and and is you know, embedding things in us and giving us the right opportunities and, and kind of the right breadcrumbs to lead us along um, in, in the things that we need. And so I know that, that that's kind of a non-answer, but I, I really think that we are always supposed to continually ask this question. We are always supposed to ask, am I relying enough on the Holy Spirit or am I, uh, or am I trying to do this under my own power? And I know, Melissa, you and I have had this conversation so many times uh, where we do get down a path and then we're like, wait a second, am I doing this because uh, the Lord has instructed me to do this or am I just doing what seems good to me? And so a lot of times, you know, we'll get into a project and we'll say like, and we'll pull back from it mm -hmm. and with that realization that no, this is just something that I came up with on my own. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of, I think we've, like our discernment, our discernment has gotten like way better. I, I feel like I've noticed like just for the past couple of years, you know, we used to like mm -hmm. dabble in like so many more things, you know, but I think like as you're talking, I'm thinking about um, the, oh, which part is it? Like something like you could do this on your own. It's like the school though has always felt like for us, like something that there's like no way we could have ever accomplished on our own. Like we could have done like bits and pieces of it, you know, I think, like, yeah. well, but I think, like, when we step into that, we knew, like, the only way that this is going to happen is because God is calling us to this, and, like, the Holy Spirit is going to have to guide us, and, like, have to make all the pieces come together, and, like, have to, like, turn people's hearts to want to, like, be generous, mm -hmm. and, and all that, you know, because, like, it's this huge project that's, like, way over our heads, you know? Right, I'm not popular enough to raise a million dollars on my own. Um, and no, we, so, we have like nobody, you know, like we just like, we have this, like a group of people that we like reach out to first, but it was like, this is, there's no way like that we can, we can do this. But like little by little, like we've just had like so much favor, you know, from God yeah. on our lives to, to really mold us and shape us. And, um, you know, obviously he's opening all the doors for all the, all the different things, you know, for yeah. the buildings and, and the art gear. And like, I know like just this year as we like, reach out and, and, you know, invite students to apply or potential students. And like, there's just going to be like those pieces in play, you know, once again. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's definitely a question of personality and temperament and kind of where we are in our, our walk as well. Um, what's the Darren Wilson movie that we watched recently where is the, there's the guy in India that like literally hears the voice of God every single morning. Yeah, and God tells him. So Darren Wilson, he did Curious Love and Finger of God, which are really cool movies if you haven't seen them. Um, but in, in one of them, there's this Indian pastor who literally wakes up every morning, hears an audible voice of God that says, go here and meet this person and do this or, or whatever he needs to do that day. And he goes and does those things, right? And which is really cool, right? And, and I mean, such an amazing experience. Um, but I think that generally, um, you know, part of the question is, Kind of, do you feel like the Holy Spirit is giving you specific instructions or is just sort of like, here's the general task. Now you fill in the blanks and do it yourself. Um, Father of Lights, thanks so much, Regina. By the way, hello to Josh and Raina and uh, and others that have joined us. Thanks so much for yeah. joining. Yeah, so, and, and so that's really cool. But I, I think for most of us, um, God, God isn't looking for automatons, right? And I think Dallas Willard in his book, Hearing God, makes this point really well, that it's not God's desire, just like it's not your desire for your children, that they should, you know, 
need to hear your voice for every little decision that they make, right? It's my desire for my boys and, and, and my daughters to uh, learn our values and kind of learn how we make decisions. Did you forget you had daughters for a second? Well, I was going to talk about my boys, but then that, that didn't sound, I mean, the girls are smaller, right? The girls don't really I make a lot of decisions first, yet. So sometimes I think I still catch myself <laughs> saying the boys. It's, that's what you're doing, sorry. But, but anyways, the, you know, it's not my desire that I have to tell them every decision, but rather that they learn our values and they learn how we operate. And they can very well ask the question, like, what decision would my dad make in, in this situation? Um, and that can inform them, and then they make their own decisions. And I think that's very much what God wants for us, that God, that God treasures it when he can give us a goal and then just sort of trust us and believe in us, that, that we're going to do our best and we're, of course, going to make mistakes and we wouldn't do it as well as Jesus would do it. But we're going to, you know, do our best to uh, use the words that we've heard from the Lord and use the knowledge of the Bible that we had and, and use our community of believers around us to make good decisions that reflect his heart for the world. Um, yeah, I, as you're talking about that, just last night, like right before bed, I, like I heard the Lord say, like, believe in me the way that I believe in you. And the part that really stuck out to me when he said that, and I think it was what he was trying to get across, and I felt like it was going to be a message for something, and probably tonight was like it was, um, you know, like we believe in God, right? We believe that he's good. We believe that he's there. And he just like believes so much in us, you know, that there's like that second part was like, believe in me as I believe in you. Like he's like rooting for us and he's on our side. And he's not like, I feel like so often Christians are like, you know, we have that tendency to be like, well, we have to do everything right. Or like, God's like, like yeah. waiting to like see us mess up and like punish us. And You're out. That. Yeah. Like, you lost. but no, he's like, he's believing in us. Like he made us in his image. So therefore, like he knows what's inside of us and he put all these things yeah. in there. And like, he's just like, go and go, you know, go do, you know, I, I believe in you. I'm rooting for you. Yeah. I had a, I was praying for um, someone who's actually a group. Um, several, probably a couple months ago at this point, and they were frustrated because they felt like they weren't hearing from from God, like what to do next. And I had this a, this really strong prophetic impression that that God was just sort of giving them this opportunity to fly. You know, God was giving them this opportunity to to implement the values that He'd already given them. Um, you know, and, and I think it's really easy to misinterpret those seasons as, well, God's not speaking to me, you know, mm -hmm. is God upset with me and things like that. But sometimes it really is, I think, God just giving us an opportunity to say, what would you do? You know, how would you, how would you play this out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so that's, that's the best answer I've got, Jeff. I hope that helps. I hope that answers your question. But I, I think, I think what it comes down to is, um, you know, God, God is living and active, and he's, he's available to be heard. And, and so I think it's even going to change season to season for each of us as, as we go about these things. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking about, this is going to be switching gears to have a little bit, <laughs> but I was thinking about the spirit stories that we have coming up, and I just thought it would be cool to, like, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of, like, maybe more of, like, why that's been on your heart as something that like for a couple of years now like wanting to do that yeah so i um we have this event coming up right we're gonna, we're, it's just it's not really an event like we're having a bonfire at our house but we're gonna live stream um the spirit stories like storytelling thing yeah and the the original concept was um to uh, and we've done this before with the school of kingdom writers where we've kind of got some people that um have had miracles happen in their lives, have seen supernatural healing or supernatural provision or, you know, prophetic words that come true and things like that, and just had them share their stories. Um, and so if you, if you go to the school website, you can find an, a video of one event that we did like that. Um, so kind of the same idea is just to provide a platform for sharing stories about God. And we also wanted to do it on Halloween. Um, we've struggled with Halloween for a long time. Um, at least a couple of years, and, and not really knowing what to do with it. Um, you know, on, on one hand, I think that, uh, you know, we, we have power over darkness, right? And, uh, you know, through, through prayer and thanksgiving, um, to some degree, everything is permissible for us. So, so I think there's space to participate in trick-or-treat and things like that. But at the same time, it is such a dark time. And I believe 
Um, personally, I believe that uh, demonic activity is it's much more prevalent in the United States than we give it credit for. I think that there's a, a lot more demonization, a lot more darkness than we're aware of. Um, one, one of the great tactics of the devil right now in the United States is that he, he stays quiet. Um, you want to grab that cord there? Sorry, I should have plugged it in. Um, and so I think a lot of times for that reason, we're not fully aware of the, the kind of supernatural activity that's happening around us. And, you know, Halloween is, is a really dark time. It, it is, you know, the satanic high holiday, essentially, when Satanists and, um, and, and other people who uh, celebrate evil um, <laughs> just it's over there. Uh, I guess there's one over here. Such is life. Um, so in any case, you know, there's all this evil and that we don't really want to be a part of. We, we don't really want to participate in that. And so we've been caught in this awkward middle ground. Um, generally, you know, as a life philosophy, we try to participate in our local community, you know. And so um, there, there's something about Halloween where everybody, all your neighbors go outside, right? And they all want to talk to each other and they want to give out candy to kids. Those are beautiful things, right? And, and so we don't want to, you know, necessarily throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, and, and also, I mean, an even better part is that at Halloween, there is this openness to the supernatural. There's this one day, this one time of the year when pretty much everybody in America is open to the fact that there is this unseen supernatural realm that's, that's happening around us. Um, and, and if that conversation is happening, I want to be a part of it, right? If, and I think what, what we've seen a lot in the United States is that conversation happens and all the Christians leave. Right, and then the darkness totally, um, you know, overpowers any other viewpoints in that conversation. And so we've been thinking for a while about, you know, what can we do to bring the Holy Spirit into this, uh, into this time of the year? And in fact, Halloween comes from the word All Hallows Eve, uh, which is the time that the the church historically celebrated all the saints. Um, so you know, all the saints have different days and festivals throughout the year, and this was kind of the catch-all. Right, that we're going to celebrate um, all the saints, and not just all the saints, but all of the all of the believers as, as saints, not just canonized saints, um, and, and kind of just give glory to God for that. And so we want to recapture some of that. We think that there's there's an opportunity there to once again to participate in that conversation that the world is having, rather than to to be afraid of it. Um, and that's not a judgment on anybody that, that chooses not to participate in Halloween, but I think that that's 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 a judgment on us, you know, that's uh, been our perspective a little bit. It's like, should we embrace this or should we be afraid of it? And I think a better answer is let's change the conversation, mm -hmm. right? I think that's what Jesus did, right? When the Pharisees would always come and they'd say, is it this or is it this? And Jesus would say, Jesus would answer a totally different question, right? He would totally Mike Pence that debate and just answer whatever question he wanted to oh, answer. Went I went there. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, we were joking because we have a bunch of flies in our house. Right. <laughs> that came to the door open. I'm joking that we're going to have a Mike Pence on it. Anyway, sorry. Um, but, but in any case, uh, you know, let's have the conversation that, that we want to have at this time of the year. Um, and so, yeah, this year, um, you know, just, just with the way the world is uh, with COVID and, and things like that. And that's another thing that we feel like we're caught in the middle of. You know, we want to be respectful of, of authorities and we want to be respectful of people who are afraid, but we don't feel afraid, you know, and we don't really want to live our lives that way. So we're caught in this tension in the middle of it. But in, just with the way that things are, um, it didn't seem like the right year to have that big event with mm -hmm. having a bunch of people come in and tell stories and things like that. So I, I thought there are all of these cool and kind of scary stories of saints that, uh, uh, you know, from church history that we could tell. And we could start there because, you know, we can debate whether some of those stories are true or whether some of them are just kind of uh, mythology to reinforce certain virtues and things like that. I think you can have that. You know, it's not the Bible when we're talking about these saints, um, but they're still really cool stories and, and they're purposeful stories. And so we thought, let's let's tell some of those stories. So just as a little preview, um, there was one saint. Saint. Can you do Winifred? No, I'm just going to do Saint Dennis. Okay. We'll save Winifred, um, and it'll be better then. We'll we'll put a lot more to it. Spooky, fire. Spooky noises and things. We won't have any Halloween. <laughs> but Saint Dennis was—he uh, was a uh, 
he was sent to Paris to convert people there. And the local pagans were so upset by this that they cut off his head. Um, and a lot of saints, they would try to kill him all different ways and it didn't work, but they cut off the heads and that, that pretty much, pretty much ended it. So what does St. Dennis do? He picks up his head and he, he carries it for six miles while giving a sermon. Like, and so, <laughs> like, can you imagine that? It's like imagining this being in like the Haunted Mansion at like Disney World right. or something, right? Like, this is like, it feels like something out of a story for sure. I it mean, does, it's a story, yeah. But, yeah. And so we're going to tell some of these stories and we're going to celebrate uh, the Walking Dead. You know, the Walking Dead is, is not new. Uh, that, that comes from the Bible way sooner than this. Resurrection, we're going to celebrate supernatural powers. Um, and, and we're just going to show the, the face of God. We're going to bring the light into this thing that is normally full of so much darkness. Right, because like, even if these stories aren't like completely true, like God wins in them, right? Yeah. Like, and it does show like, I mean, I think we talk a lot, Brad and I at least, about, this is what we're doing, we're talking, nobody else here, um, <laughs> but like just about um, how like in America we completely just like avoid the supernatural and I think it leaves like our children just like, like we all have this hunger for the supernatural, I think, like yeah. in us, so it, it leaves them like wanting things and so then they dabble you know and, and drugs and alcohol and, and just all these like you know worldly things to try to fill that i mean obviously that god hole but also just like that need to see and understand the supernatural and so i think like yeah or they dabble in you know witchcraft or whatever and right. so yeah, because the supernatural is real and i yeah. think we have this sense of the supernatural and it's not well developed in most of us um i think that's part of the christian walk right it's developing our understanding and our ability to sense and perceive what's happening in the supernatural but regardless if you've had any you know religious instruction at all we all feel that there is something supernatural around us and and we know that on an intuitive level and yeah like you're saying if if the church doesn't provide it which in a lot of cases the church doesn't provide any access in fact they actively discourage because of the scary parts and i think you know probably um those those fears come from well-intentioned places but because we don't scratch that itch for the supernatural we do just open the door for for so many other things okay. so that will be october 31st we're still debating the time i think it should be 8 p.m melissa thinks that's too late well like we're having a bonfire and inviting friends over you know to be a part of it and so i don't know just don't want to go so late for kids that might be there but right you know so we'll see. We'll but figure it out. We'll let you know. Keep your eyes posted to the Facebook page, and we'll we'll post more stuff about that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to put some effort into making sure that the live stream works around a fire. Maybe we'll do a practice one or something yeah. like that to make sure that we can do the lighting and things like, like that. Day, so right, all those fires. All it's fires. all comes full circle. It's true. <laughs> Beginning to end with this live stream. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, before we go, I want to pray for anything that you guys have on your mind. So um, we'll, we'll talk for a few minutes because sometimes it takes the, the comments tend to lag a little bit. But um, if there's anything that we can be praying for, I want you to leave it there. And uh, we believe that, that God can touch you, that God wants to touch mm -hmm. you, that the Holy Spirit can transcend the digital platform, you know, and he can be in both places at once. And uh, so if you leave a comment there, um, we're just going to to agree with you know what, what god has put on your heart so it could be a prayer for healing it could be a prayer for uh you know financial situation or um you know other provision issues or, or whatever so please uh please leave a comment there and we'd love to pray um have you seen any cool god stories lately yeah some movies i'm like you know, seen any good movies <laughs> yeah it's the latest <laughs> conversation you can ever have you come here often <laughs> We don't watch movies like hardly ever. Um, God stories. Man, I'm gonna like always draw a blank at the God stories question. Um, no, I like in the beginning of the year, like tried to start making a list. One of our pastors was like, make a list of God stories, you know, it's one of my sermons. And I was like, yeah, make a list in my phone and I'll never forget. And I haven't made a list for like nine months now, so. Yeah. There was this cool thing that happened with my toe. Oh, yeah. 
Do you want to tell that That's one? That's really your story. That is really my story. So uh, my toe, I dropped something on it and it turned purple, right? It turned purple like the nail was about to fall off. And it's 100% the situation. And went to sleep that night and woke up the next day and it was fine. Oh, we didn't even pray. For we it. didn't even pray. No, we didn't pray at all. Um, but it, and yeah. I think that's cool, right? God knows what we need. Um, it's interesting, you know, we pray for healing, and I'm going to continue to pray for healing. But Jesus never said pray for healing. He said heal the sick, mm -hmm. right? That we should carry this. And uh, what was I reading today? It was uh, when Jesus heals the paralytic in, in Matthew. It's like probably chapter 8 or something like that. And it, the people praised him and says, what authority that, that, that God has given to man. And, and I think that that's the authority that we're supposed to carry, right? So yeah. um, that would be really cool to get to that place where it's just like, bam, be healed, you know, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Or like, you know, Paul with the, with the, the handkerchief. handkerchief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. So Regina um, would like pray for her eyes. I mean, she's like strained by computers. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Awesome. Yeah. Well, let's pray for that. And while we pray, if you know something comes to mind, drop it there. You know, there's nothing too big or too small for God. And this is a funny thing that I that I see. So I go out on the streets and pray for people, um, not as much as I used to, but fairly frequently. And uh, we tend to develop this box for God, right? And so sometimes, you know, I'll, question I frequently ask somebody is, if God can help you with something right now, what what would you need help with? And sometimes they'll have like a headache or something and they'll be like, oh, you know, don't bother God with that. And so we have these things that are too small for God to take care of. And then somebody will have like cancer and they're like, oh, but the doctors say that unless, you know, X, Y, Z happens, I won't get better. And so we have these things that are too big for God to handle. And we, we, have, we have this very narrow sandwich of things that are neither too small to waste God's time nor too big for God to do. Bad cakes. Right? Like, yeah. that kind of always fits in there. And... Backaches are good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Arthritis yeah. Fits, fits well in that sandwich like there. It really bothers them, you know? Right. But yeah. we could believe that maybe it yeah. would go away. But, you know, God is, is master of the whole spectrum of stuff. So even if it's something small, like a, a little toe, it wasn't even like a concern to me. You know, it wasn't no, like I was going to be bent out of shape. You just were like, oh, my toe's all gross. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Like, Sorry enjoy the that. next 10 weeks of gross toe. Like, no big deal. Um, but God still cares about that. So God cares about your finances. God cares about your puppy. God cares about your cancer. Um, so we're going to pray for Regina. Um, yeah, we see legs grow out all the time, Regina, which mm -hmm. is so cool to see. And that's that's like an easy one, it seems like. Like, God just moves so quickly on that, at least in, in my experience. Yeah, I don't yeah. have nearly the experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm usually at home with the kids, so... Yeah, but I would like to see, so frequently we see a lot of people have one leg shorter than the other. And in fact, a lot of times they have like back or hip pain. And that's what the issue is. You know, you have them sit down and compare the length of the legs and they'll be off by, you know, half an inch or an inch or something. And we pray for that and we see the leg just grow out and, and even up. And um, and so that that's a really, really frequent thing that we see. And it's like almost all the time it happens. Um, it happens I think we just have so much faith for that at this point that a lot of times before we pray, like we'll, we'll sit down and sit somebody down and we'll see that it's, uh, see that it's off. And like, as soon as we open our mouth to even say a word, it's like, it just comes right out. Right. And it ends up, um, which is super cool. But I would love to see like something I've been praying for for a while is to see amputees actually have like limbs regenerated. And I feel like that's something that, that God has been impressing on my heart. So I've prayed for, I've only prayed for one, you know, I don't encounter that many amputees, I guess, but I'm really believing that, uh, that that can happen. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And, uh, Regina mentioned Todd White and Dan Muller. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I love watching Todd White videos. In fact, when I was just getting started in power evangelism, um, I had gone out with a friend and he, he's more experienced than, than I am. And, you know, I was kind of watching and kind of, kind of, a little bit skeptical, you know, believing what I saw, but just always still looking for like, well, could this be psychosomatic or, um, you know, people are just believing that they're healed and but they aren't really. Um, but then I saw this Todd White video for the first time. And if you're not familiar with Todd White, he goes out on the street and prays for things and just sees things happen all the time. And that just fired me up. And so the next time I went out, I went out and like, 
a lot of times I'm kind of tentative. I'm not really an extrovert. I got to kind of turn that on, but I just talked to everybody I saw, like, as I'm walking, like, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? And I probably asked 30 people if I could pray for them. And I kid you not, all of them said no. Every single person that I talked to said, said no, that, uh, that they did not want prayer, which is abnormal. Normally it's like at least 90% of people are like, sure, I guess, you know, nothing's going to happen, but you can pray for me. But everybody said no. And, uh, but then the next time that we went out, um, it was like, it was like things just turned on and it was, you know, then people said yes. And not only did they say yes, but more things were happening than I've ever seen happen before. And it was almost like God was, uh, you know, I don't think God tests us in the way that we understand testing, but it was that opportunity to say like, are you going to do it even if you don't see the cool stuff, mm-hmm. right? Are you still going to act in faith just because I said that you should do this? Are you going to be obedient and be faithful whether you get to see the cool spectacle and see the, the thing happen or not? And uh, and so I think that, that was cool. You know, we pushed, I pushed through that and, and so many things have happened. So many doors have opened because of that. Um, but yeah, and I, I really like Dan Moeller's teachings. I, mean, I think that's how you say his last name. Um, but uh, I think Dan Moeller is a much better teacher than Todd White. Um, I, I sometimes listen to Todd White's podcast, and it's it's all right. It's uh, he's, he's got great stories and things like that. But Dan Moeller really seems to have a robust understanding of, of that theology. And um, I haven't listened to enough of him to fully endorse all of his theology, but I think that he's got a lot of really good stuff. So uh, definitely cool people to check out and, and listen to if you're not familiar with them. Um, but in any case, let's pray. And so is Regina's eyes and then any other com- comments that we see, right? Yeah. Cool. You want to start? Sure. Lord, we just thank you so much for um, Regina's faith, you know, to to just um, to take that risk to, to post that and, and to, to ask for prayer. And so I just pray right now that you heal her eyes, Lord. God, that whatever, you know, that they're straying from, you know, being on the computer and, and just, you know, the, the use that we all probably have, of just overuse of our eyes. Um, God, I just pray that you reverse that right now, that you make them better than ever. God, that you, um, that you just reverse any damage or any, um, I don't even know what, what causes it, but just, um, you just make them brand new. Uh, even if she's like near or far sighted, Lord, I pray that you just even improve that, just, you just improve her vision. 100%. Yeah, Father, and um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same Regina who is a, a part of the Arc Year classes, and so I just want you guys to join me in just blessing those guys. They're running a really important place right now uh, where they are deciding which what idea am I going to write for the next six months. They're going to put 100 hours into this project. Whatever they choose, you know, they're going to lock in for, for 100 hours of of work on this thing. So, Lord, we just bless each of those Arc Year students. God, we thank you that you are at work. God, I thank you. I believe that you have good things in store for, for these stories, God, that, that there are people that you've ordained in advance that are going to be affected by the work of the students in this class. So, Lord, I pray that you bless them, that you'd speak to them now. Lord, the ones that aren't used to even seeking your voice, I pray that you would just break through right now, Lord, and that you would open um, the door, God, that you would break through barriers, Father, that you would move boundaries and securities out of the way that might stand in the way of your voice, Lord. And I pray that you would speak over them, God. Any fears, any any fears of man, even, even well-intentioned boundaries that people have put up, I pray that you would just trample those things right now, Lord, that you would empower them with boldness and confidence and just to, just to say the words that you've put in their minds and in their hearts. Yes, Lord. So uh, we just ask for that, Lord. And uh, there, there's this courage that some people have where they'll just have a conversation like on their cell phone in the middle of a coffee shop. And uh, and I just want to bless these students with that kind of confidence, Lord, that they're going to have their conversation with you in public, Lord. Mm-hmm. That they're not going to be afraid who's listening, who might overhear, whether whoever overhears might have all the right context or nuance for the conversation, Lord, but that they're just going to, yeah, break through in creativity. Mm-hmm. Um, as Regina said, God, that that they would just be unstoppable, God, that it'd be welling up. 
that they would not be able to be stopped from, from spouting the stuff that normally would make them feel uncomfortable or insecure. Lord, I just pray against any backlash to the enemy, any shame or guilt or feelings of embarrassment that the enemy wants to bring about. We rebuke that right now mm -hmm. in your name, God. And I thank you for blessing these 200 plus students, Lord, and teaching each life, touching each life right now. <clears throat> so we praise you, Lord, for these things. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that your hand would be upon the spirit stories. Lord, I pray that that is something that would represent you. God, and I, I, I know that we are walking a careful line with that kind of thing. Um, but I, I feel like it's a line that you've commissioned us to walk. And, and so, Lord, please keep us safe in that. Lord, please help us to, to see and know the boundaries before we cross them. Lord, I pray that our voices would be heard in this conversation. I pray that um, lives would be touched this All Hallows Eve because of the work that you're doing through things like this. So, Lord, I thank you so much, Father, for every need that hasn't been expressed. Um, God, I just, I just pray that you'd inspire these folks who are dealing with things and wondering if you care about it. God, I, would, I just ask that you'd, you'd give them one little push, Lord, to exercise their faith and, and to ask. Because that is a risk. It is a risk to ask. The risk that we might not receive, Lord. And um, God, I pray that you heal wounds. I pray that you heal, you know, trauma and disappointments that, that make us think like, well, maybe I shouldn't ask. Maybe it's better just not to mm -hmm. take that risk. And so we know that you're good. We know that you're present. We know that you're real. And we know that you are good, Lord. And so we thank you so much for all the ways that you're touching us, all the ways that we can have a conversation like this. And we praise your name tonight, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, awesome. You guys have been great tonight. You've been a tremendous audience, the best. the best. Exceptional audience. Many people have told me what a great audience you are. Magnificent. Tremendous audience. So um, thank you. Seriously, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, we'd love to answer them. So you can shoot me an email. Um, you can go to the SOKW.org website and find our contact information there, or you can always send us a message on Facebook. And we'd love to chat with you directly or maybe answer your question in a future video. So uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the future. Good night.